said final solution amen the secret heavenly amen I want to remind you again that that word amen originates from heaven it's not like the ordinary word you find in your dictionary it may be in the dictionary but it came from heaven and so when we say that amen from the depth of our heart not to distract anybody not to show that we have the strongest voice in town we don't use the word amen like a curse word like a drunkard saying amen like a drunkard reading the scriptures like a drunkard saying the lord is my shepherd that's a drunkard that's blasphemy but we who are children of god whenever we say amen we understand it's an heaven sent word and we don't just play pranks for the word amen not only that in the presence of god there should be proper decorum there should be proper presentation of our lives of everything we are and it's not because of me i can endure almost anything if i want to but as your father as your teacher as your shepherd i need to tell you what will help you be in good relationship with god that's the reason i'm saying all that and so you don't take any action or speak any word in the presence of god that god will say he came for final solution and he's blaspheming me and he's ridiculing me and he's making jest of me and he's taking my word like a drunkard turning it upside down just to please himself you'll be a child of god an obedient child of god obedient to god obedient to your shepherd obedient to your pastor obedient to the word of god in the house in the family we don't equate the baby the toddler the child the teenager with the father or the mother honor your father and your mother and obey him in all things that your days may be long it's for you the father if he knows what he has he live a happy life long life but for you that your days may be long on the earth that's why when you come to the house of god you have a father you have a pastor and it doesn't matter your height doesn't matter your profession doesn't matter your training doesn't matter your opportunity that respect for god for the house of god for your pastor for your father in the lord that respect must be there and the one who labors to feed you with the word of god that gratitude should be there you don't equate him with yourself push him down walk over him and then tell your friends you see how courageous i am the one who pushes now his father and walks over his father that's not courage that's a bad child in the old testament they'll bring that child to the congregation 
and say, This, my child, is stubborn. I've corrected him. I've taught him. He will not lose him. They'll get rid of him out of the nation, out of Israel. In the church, there should be the understanding that when you are saved, your life is transformed. And that you live the life in church, at home, everywhere, that you carry the anointing and the grace of God. I carry the anointing. I said I carry the anointing. That anointing will work in your life in Jesus' name. You will succeed. You will progress. Looking unto Jesus, your life will come higher and higher in Jesus' name. And we don't use the Bible against the Bible. We don't use the Bible against the purpose of God. He gave the word to get us saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and live for Him. And we don't use anything in the house of God that God has provided to make us strong in the faith and to live a righteous life and then we take that thing a song a song book a bible a musical instrument gadgets screen anything we don't use what belongs to god against god against the salvation of people against the purpose for which God has given that thing. If we do, you are like a drunkard blaspheming and using the property of God against God. That doesn't show you real child of God. You carry anointing, act, stand, behave, live like a person who knows I came for final solution and I got it and I got it somebody there I got it father in the name of Jesus we well, bless your name we we'll glorify you we we'll thank you at this time and we're asking oh Lord that you will help us to keep the final solution, the full solution, the fruitful solution you have given every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll not take your name in vain. Amen. We'll not hear your word in vain. Amen. We'll not say amen in vain. Amen. We will not sing in vain. Amen. We will not preach in vain. Or will not be in the church in vain. Speak to your people this morning. And I pray the word you give us will energize us. Empower us. Lift us up. And make us the men and the women, the boys and the girls you want us to be in Jesus' name. But thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Can see that we're coming to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12. We're reading from verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about was so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking 
unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's talking about Jesus, the Savior, Jesus, our Lord, Jesus, our King of Kings, Jesus, our Redeemer. And he says now that we are concluding the retreat, the final solution retreat. Final solution in your life. Final solution in your family. Final solution in your Christian life. Final solution in your profession. Final solution to every problem, every mountain of your life in Jesus' name. He wants us to understand now all that we have heard, all that we have listened to, everything we have written down, everything we have stored in our hearts, everything we have believed. And it says, as we go, the tendency for many people will be to, you know, look at people and look at the people on the roadside and look at the people standing at the crossway and their heart begins to go to them. The tendency is for people to know and to look at the people they saw before. The people that used to control their lives and the people that used to tie some ropes on their legs and draw them here and there like a puppet. But now he says, with all we have heard and with all that we have known, he says, looking unto Jesus. And as you look at that word, looking, it's a continual thing. You have heard of Christ and you have known Christ. He has become your savior. He has become your shepherd. He has become your supplier. He has become all in all unto you. And he has given you promises. And he has given you power. Behold, I give unto you power. And he has given you provision. All the provision you will ever need. And he says, look in. Not just to look and then look away. Not just to look and then shut your eyes. Not just to look and forget about it. You're looking, looking, looking unto Jesus. Anything you need, looking unto Jesus. You need strength, looking unto Jesus. You need revelation, looking unto Jesus. You need a way out and you need to come out of the wilderness and get to the promised land, looking unto Jesus. You need a blessing, looking unto Jesus. You need children, looking unto Jesus. Is it your wife, husband? You need looking unto Jesus. Material things, spiritual things, looking unto Jesus. You need progress, anything you need in your life, looking unto Jesus. You are not lack. You will not fail. You will not falter. You will not take your eyes off Jesus. You remember the story of Peter, Simon Peter. He saw Christ walking on the sea. And he said, and they were first of all afraid, what is this? Because Christ was doing what no man had ever done before that time. Walking on the sea and walking on the river. And uh, the disciples were afraid. He said, It is I, be not afraid. Any situation you get to, as you are going back home, it is Christ, be not afraid. Commotion will not affect you, confusion will not affect you, any conflict will not affect you, any fire that you hear of will not affect you, the river will not drown you. You are going back home with the power, the provision, the promise of God, looking unto Jesus. They were afraid. He said, it is I, be not afraid. And then Simon Peter said, if that's you, I want to do what you do. I want to also stand on that water. I also want to walk on that water. Bid me come unto thee. And Jesus said, come. Just one word, just one word. 
our first faith will hold on to that single word. Our first love will hold on to that single word. Our obedience, the first kind of obedience, will hold on to that word, come. And he came out of the boat and he walked on the water. On any ocean, any storm, any waves in your life, you will walk over that water. What Christ would have done, walking on that sea, and walking on that problem, and walking on that ocean of problems, waves of problems, you will walk on your ocean. You will walk on your faith. You will walk by faith in Jesus' name. He came out of the boat and started walking on the water. As long as was looking at Jesus, my ideal, my pattern, my example, my Lord, the captain of my salvation, as long as he was looking unto Jesus, he kept on walking on the water. But when he saw the wind boisterous, and he took his eyes of Jesus, and he forgot the word here, looking, looking, looking unto Jesus continually. As he forgot that, and he started looking at Mr. So-and-so. As he started looking at Madam So-and-so. As he started looking at the boisterous people. And the, the people that are, you know, bullies started looking at them. Started looking at the people that could cause problems. Started looking at the waves. He began to sing. You know, as you go back home, and as you go back to your office, and as you go back to your worship centers and worship places, keep on looking unto Jesus. If you look at the boisterous sea, the boisterous men, the boisterous women, and the boisterous persecutors, and the boisterous sinners, and the boisterous blasphemers, you begin to sing, you will not sing. Looking unto Jesus. The people that have gone before us, that's what they did. That's what they did. They kept on looking. If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been looking at the furious face of Nebuchadnezzar, they would have been burnt. If Daniel had been looking at the people that conspired together, and they said, if anybody pray to any god apart from the king, he'll be thrown to the lion's den. If was looking at their decree, and looking at the law of the Medes and the Persians that cannot change, he would have been eaten up by the lions. But he kept looking at his God, believing his God. As you go back home, you'll be living, believing in God and looking unto God every time, every moment, whatever the challenge in Jesus' name. If Abraham had kept on looking at Sarah, because now Sarah was past age to, be, to deliver a child, but the promise of God had said, by this time next year, Sarah will carry a baby, and laughter will come into Abraham's family. Laughter will come to your family. But if Abraham had been looking at Sarah, looking at Sarah, did God give me a promise? Can the promise of God be fulfilled? Look at my wife, look at Sarah. When he looked at the physical, he will stop seeing God. But he kept on looking, he kept on looking, looking unto his God. And his prayer was answered. What the Lord is telling us is that as we go back home, any situation you find yourself, any condition you find yourself, don't look at that condition, looking unto Jesus. Somebody there looking unto Jesus. But you know, if you're going to look unto Jesus, it's not just your eyes. You see the mind 
controls what you are looking at. The mind controls what you gaze at. When your mind is occupied with such and such, your mind is occupied with so and so, your mind will make you to be looking at such and such and so and so. But if your mind is full of Christ and your mind is full of the Word of God, it is that which fills your heart. It is that which is uppermost in your heart. You'll be looking at the field of the picture of Christ. Be filled with the portrait of Christ. Be filled with the promises of Christ. Be filled with the power of Christ. And know that Christ cannot fail. When your mind is full of Christ, when your mind is full of the promises of God, of the light of the word of God, Jesus is the light. And when your heart is filled with that, your heart, your soul, your mind will influence you as to what you look at, looking unto Jesus. You'll keep on looking unto Jesus. Whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, you'll not allow anything, anyone to take Christ away from your heart in Jesus' name. But what do you do? If you're going to really look unto Jesus continually, you need to leave some things behind. It's like a marriage. You need to leave before you can cleave. For this cause, shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife? And they way and they too shall be one. If you are going to cleave unto Christ, always looking at Christ, always seeing Christ, you need to leave something behind. What's that? Look at verse 1. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with a great cloud, of witnesses. What does he mean by that? It's referring to chapter 11. We're compassed about of the life of Enoch, the life of Abel, the life of Noah, the life of Abraham, the life of Sarah, the life of Isaac, the face of Jacob. The face of Joseph, the face of the parents of Moses, the face of Moses, the face of Rahab, the face of many other people like Gideon and David and Jephthah and all the prophets. And it says, we're compassed about ways a cloud of witnesses. Yes, we have challenges. There are challenges too. And there are problems too. But... They were looking at the one that cannot fail. It says, because of the examples of all these people, let us lay aside. Lay aside. If you're running a race, you cannot carry a bag of cement on your back. And then you're running. And all the others who are running with you, they're not carrying any load. And therefore, they're free. And they're free to run. Is telling us all the load, all the entanglements, all the encumbrances that will impede our journey, that will lessen our strength, that will make us to slow down, that will weigh us down. It says, lay all that aside. And then it says, and the sin which so easily beset us. If you already feeling hot, you're not going to stay near fire. If you're already feeling cold, you'll not go and stay in a cold room. If you're ready, you know your strength, you know your ability, this may not be the first retreat you're attending. You've come before, you've come before. How did you lose what you, get, what you got? 
how did you lose the power the strength the promise and the commitment you had at that time because you stayed near the sin and the people that weakened you that's why it says now with this final solution retreat with everything you have got i got something i said i got something you know it's not um, it's not just saying it i got something really 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 i got something and people will tell if you've got something people can tell if you've got something it will not be your testimony will not be an empty testimony i got something you got something and it says remember retreats of the past what you got what you received what you embraced what testimonies you gave how did you lose all those things by staying near the scene that does so easily beset you it says lay all that aside let nothing come into your life that will make you to go back to a life of unseriousness a life of no commitment a life of not understanding how sacred the life of a child of God is, and then you slip back, you slide back to what you were before. You will not slide back this time. You will not go back this time. You will not take your blessing for granted this time in Jesus' name. Uh, look at Second Timothy here. Second Timothy, I'm reading from chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, we're looking at verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the fears of this life. Can you imagine a soldier on the battlefield, battlefront, and he's thinking of fashion, he's thinking of worldliness, he's thinking of drinking, he's thinking of this and that. While he's on the battlefront, no man that is on the battlefront entangles himself with the fears of this life you need to examine your life you need to look at your life and say that will tie me down that will entangle me that will compromise my conviction that will make me go back that will impede my journey and no man that worries entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please not the church that he may please not man not woman that he may please the persecutor no they say if you can't beat them join them never don't join your persecutors they may make fire and they may do anything and they may even expose themselves and say i am your persecutors you're not wise if you use if you have wisdom you will join me have you not heard if you cannot beat them join them no we soldiers of the cross don't join them i said we soldiers of the cross don't join them your amen has gone no man that worries entangleth himself with the fears of this life your persecutors may appear strong but if you keep on looking unto Jesus, even without praying about it, keep on looking unto Jesus, you will walk on all the seas of the persecutors in Jesus' name. Don't join any bad gang. Don't join any bad assembly. Don't join any bad clique. Don't say, 
if I want to live peaceful, I must join them because worldly wisdom teaches people you can't beat them, join them. Moses, you can't beat the magicians, join them. You can't convince Pharaoh, join him. Daniel, you can't beat all those conspirators, join them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you can't beat Nebuchadnezzar, Israel's top and idol. And he says, if anybody does not co compromise and cooperate, cooperate, he will be thrown into the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, join them. No, victors don't join the people that are failures. I will not join the failures. I said, I will not join the failures. They may make the fire, make it hotter, seven times hotter. All the same, the fourth one will come from heaven. It will be with you in that fire. And Nebuchadnezzar got up and he looked and he said, May senators, astrologers, did we not cast three men into the fire? Behold, I see four, and the appearance of the fourth one is like the Son of God. The Son of God will be with you. You will not be on the side of compromisers. If you compromise and yield and surrender, and you join evil, it will not be with you. But when you take your stand, and you say, I'm a militant soldier of the cross. Fire will not burn you. Yeah. And also make the effort in, you know, setting up the fire. They use their resources, setting up the fire. They will walk in vain because the fire will not do what they expected. The fire will do. I see somebody who will not be burnt in Nebuchadnezzar's fire. I, I didn't say I heard. I said I see. I see somebody. I see somebody. What do you see? I see somebody. I see somebody. A man, a woman, you will not be burnt in fire in Jesus' name. I remember preaching a message similar to this some years ago. And I told the people as you go back home, demonstrate the power, demonstrate the anointing, demonstrate the courage, demonstrate the conviction that you have got. And this sister, not very educated sister. I'm not sure she finished primary school. But now she's grown older. But now she's married. And she was coming as a member of Deeper Life. I can see her face now, always smiling. No problem because Jesus, her Jesus was always on the throne. And the people, the family, they called her. And they all gathered together. And he said, we've called you for serious business. And she was smiling. It's no laughing business. It's no smiling business. If you don't give up this church and this kind of thing, if you don't give it up, we're taking our son from you. You will not be your husband anymore. <clears throat> And they said, make up your mind. Give us the answer here. She, she's not from Lagos, but she was in Lagos. They invited her to the village. And so there was one uh, paralyzed child in their family. And a child was there. And while those people were sitting, said, make up your mind. 
so that we know what you are going to do. You continue in this space, in this religion, in that church, deeper life. Your family is gone. <clears throat> and so she stood up and went to that lame child in the family. She didn't answer them. She didn't say, I'm sorry for believing in Christ. I'll never be sorry believing in Christ. Will you be sorry? Never. And she went to that child that was lame and said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Amen. What do you think happened? I said, what do you think happened? That child rose up in the presence of all those persecutors that child rose up and walk. <clears throat> and the people, when they saw that, they shook their head. They said, you can go on. A family was kept. Her faith was kept. She came back to Lagos. That time I used to see people, you know, because there were not as many as these, one on one. And then she came with a smiling face. I knew she had a testimony. Maybe I will create time to see you one day. And I will see your smiling face. And I will know you have a testimony in Jesus' name. She didn't entangle herself with the affairs of this life. The power she got, the provision she got, and the anointing she got, she demonstrated that you will demonstrate your anointing. No man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him. Your goal all the time is not to please any persecutor, not to please any compromiser, not to please any backslider, not even to please a believer. If you please the Lord, and he is on the side of the Lord, he will be pleased. If you please the Lord, and she is on the side of the Lord, she'll be pleased. If she's not pleased, she's not on the side of the Lord. If he is not pleased, he's not on the side of the Lord. And why do you care for somebody who is not on the side of the Lord to please that man? You'll not please an antichrist. You'll not please a false prophet. You'll not please the false brethren. He says that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You'll please the Lord. Come back to this Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> I'm reading from verse 1. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, or so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. Don't forget the race. Let us run with patience. There are people that forget the race. They're so occupied with a lot of things. They forget they're running a race. They're distracted. Their mind is jolted. And their life is meandering. They cannot go straight past anymore. Why? They even forget any race. The baton in their hand is almost dropping because they forget they're running a race 
the family is there problems to look at and to solve they've forgotten about that the children are there to be taught to be led they've forgotten that and their lives to achieve what it ought to achieve they've forgotten that they've forgotten they are running a race and because they're forgotten they are not doing what they ought to do but it says let us run for patience. That's what patience means, perseverance. Let us run relentlessly. Let us run perseveringly. Let us run with conviction. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. There are other people that change the race that was set before us. And they are now into religion. They are now into controlling other people's lives. Their own life they have not controlled. Their own lives they have not put in place in proper perspective. But now the race forgotten. I will not forget the race I'm running. I said I will not forget the race I'm called to run. Look at the race, verse 14. Follow peace with all men. That's the race. That's the race. Follow peace with all men. What if somebody is making trouble? What if somebody is trying to create a quarrel? How do I follow peace with him? Don't respond. It takes two to fight. That's what we learn to school. And if somebody is starting a fight, is starting a quarrel, is starting a confusion, is starting commotion, is starting conflict, and he says the word he used to say that before the final solution retreat will set you on edge. If he does the same thing he used to do, that will set you on edge. You remember? I'm running a race, and the race is to follow peace with all men. What do you do then to somebody who is shouting and shouting, who is screaming, who is, you know, doing some things to distract your attention and to make trouble and to set you on edge? Just overlook him. Just overlook her. Because what you don't use, you lose. If you don't talk, they make trouble. They put their heads down, they put their legs up, waving, and you look away from that, and you smile. Your smile will maintain your peace. The neglect, overlooking them, will increase your peace. And when they have demonstrated like masquerades, and they have dressed like masquerades, and they have spoken like masquerades, and you are just walking your way and you don't change your steps you don't change your pace you don't change your speed you don't change your conviction and you just overlook them they remove their mask of masquerade they will talk with their normal voice they will come to the peace that you demonstrate follow peace with all men. Don't reply somebody who wants to start a quarrel. Don't give in to somebody who doesn't know any better life, any higher life, any holier life. And all he wants is create for men trouble. Follow peace with all men and holiness. That's the race. That's the race. They try to demonstrate and show something unholy, something ungodly, something unrighteous. How do you maintain your holiness, the righteousness, your purity? Overlook them. Don't see those things. Don't pay attention to those things. You will be at peace. I will be at peace. We will be at peace. The grace of God 
will multiply in your life. Look at verse 28. Verse 28. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. Let us have grace. How do we receive the kingdom? The power of the kingdom. The knowledge of the kingdom. The glory of the kingdom. The effectiveness of the kingdom. Let us have grace. The grace of God is sufficient in your life. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're reading from verse 24. Hebrews 11 verse 24. It says in verse 24, by faith Moses, by faith, what's your name? By faith, what's your name? Say it now. Like Moses walked by faith, you will walk by faith. Can you think of a man in the midst of serpents and scorpions, in the midst of magicians and astrologers? Can you think of a man in the palace of Pharaoh, furious, angry? And Pharaoh saying, Moses, you are disturbing these people from their work. Let them do their work. And then he became so furious. And then he said, Moses, don't come here anymore. You will not see my face anymore. Anytime you come again, I've told you, I don't know the God you are talking about. You know, there are people who cannot live with the face of Moses. And if anybody challenges them and says, don't come here again, and that's the place you are supposed to come, you will get there again. Their trap will not catch you. Their power will not catch you. And so when he said, you will not see my face again, Moses said, that's right, that's right. I will not see your face again. We will meet at the Red Sea. And now they were going. And the children of Israel, they were delivered already. The message from God that he gave to Moses will be fulfilled. The messages that you have heard from all the ministers, from all the singers, and from, the, from your pastor, all the messages you have heard, they'll be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And so, Moses knew he had the final say. And eventually, you know the story, they were going. And Pharaoh said, why should I allow this one he was even brought up in this palace and he rebelled and he said i will not be a son to pharaoh's daughter come on all the chariots and all the soldiers come we'll pursue them we will bring them back to the slavery they had been on all these hundreds of years we have come here for the final solution any pharaoh any magician any chariot that will pursue us and say will bring them back to where they were before he has failed already and so when he said you'll not see my face anymore that's right that's right that's right i'll not see your face anymore and now they were going and he said Prepare the chariots, prepare the soldiers. And they were the most powerful people in the world at that time. And now the children of Israel were by the Red Sea. Mountains on this side, mountains on that side. Millions of them, men, women, boys and girls, children. And they had nowhere to run. And the Egyptians were coming. And the children of Israel cried 
there were babes in faith but Moses was not a babe in faith I will not be a babe in faith and they were crying and he said stop it don't cry for Pharaoh don't let Pharaoh hear that you are crying because of him the days of crying the period of crying for Pharaoh for the Egyptians that time is gone yeah. crying for Pharaoh crying for his chariots crying for all those soldiers those are the old days the bad old days when we didn't know our right when we didn't know what we possess now we came to the final solution retreat no crying again for you yeah. he said stand still and see the salvation of the Lord for the Egyptians who you see today you will not see them anymore in Jesus name yeah. and he started praying praying God said Moses what are you doing I am praying what are you praying for? Look at the Egyptians. And I told them, your people to stand still. You prayed enough. Have you not prayed all that time you were seeking my face? Have you not prayed all that time I will send you to Pharaoh? That prayer is enough. Your prayer is answered. Yeah. That rod in your hand, stretch it to the river remote control that gadget in your hand stretch it to that thing it will wipe that sea off the faith the power the rod of omnipotence that you have in your hand stretch it there that river will run away even for you and tell the children of Israel move on Go forward. Somebody there, go forward. Yeah. Where you couldn't go before, you will go. Yeah. The river you couldn't cross before, you will cross. Yeah. And he stretched the rod, and lo and behold, the sea, the Red Sea, parted. And the children of Israel went over. I'm going over. Somebody there, I am going over. And you know, Pharaoh was bold. But it's not the boldness of the Holy Ghost. Pharaoh was courageous. But it's not the courage of the Holy Spirit. Pharaoh was adamant, strong-willed. But it is not the strength coming from heaven is the strength the courage the boldness of a stubborn human will and so he said chariots come soldiers keep on coming the way through the sea we will go into the sea will catch up with them you will never catch up if you're an evil man with a man of God, with a woman of God. This retreat, final solution retreat, has made you another man. Another woman. Pharaoh will not catch up with you. Magicians will not catch up with you. Occultic people will not catch up with you. Enemies will not catch up with you. Those who want to cut your life short will not catch up with you. And so Pharaoh said, keep on moving, keep on moving. There are people who do not know that there are captains, commanders, they should disobey. There are people who do not know that if they are going to have a future, and maintain the future there is a pharaoh they shall not obey 
they should step back. They should allow strong-willed Pharaoh to go into the sea by himself. But none of those people had the wisdom. You will have wisdom. And they went into the sea. And Pharaoh was saying, didn't I tell you? If the sea parted, is it only for Israel? It's only for us. No, it's not for you. When he got into the middle and all his chariots, the children of Israel, every one of them without exception escaped. Look at all the people here. Where are you? You will escape. God brought you here to be an achiever. You will achieve. Pharaoh will not cut off your destiny in Jesus' name. And so God told Moses, the key that opens the door also has the ability to close the door. The rod that opened the sea also had the ability to close up the sea. And you use that rod the same way. You stretch it to the river, it's parted. Now you have escaped, close it up. Stretch that rod again, and the river came back with force to cut a long story short, or oh, Pharaoh and all those people in the chariots, they sank into the depths of the sea, forgotten. Forgotten, forgotten, the Lord has remembered you. Enemies will be forgotten. Persecutors will be forgotten. Look at that verse 24. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. By faith, tell me. Ah, you've forgotten your name. By faith. Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he had, for he had respect, desire, unto the recompense of the reward. Look at this. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Look at this. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You will see him who is invisible. You will see him who is unconquerable. You will see him who is mighty and powerful. But if you are going to see, you must keep your eyes open. You must keep on looking. Come back to Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Don't look back to Sodom, looking unto Jesus. Don't look back to Gomorrah, looking unto Jesus. Don't look back to the powers that be, the powers that had controlled your life before, looking unto Jesus. The angels came to Sodom, and they got out Lord and his wife and his two daughters, and he said, look not behind you. Keep on looking at your destination. And he took hold of their hands and he led them out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't look back. I will not look back. I will not look back. But Lot's wife, what did she do? She looked back and became, tell me, a pillar of salt. You will not die that kind of death. 
just frozen to death instantaneously. Our look determines our progress on the journey. Our look determines our destiny at the edge of the journey. Looking back, that will determine what happens at that moment of time. You will not look back. I said you will not look back. Looking at men, looking at women, will weaken you. You will not look at men or women. Looking unto Jesus. Your victory, that's where your victory is. That's where your healing is. That's where your power is. That's why your stamina, spiritual stamina, is looking in unto Jesus. I praise the Lord for you. I said I praise the Lord for you. Your victory is as simple as looking. If I told you, look at this object, a child can do that. A boy, a girl can do that. Look at that object. A man can do that. A woman can do that. A newcomer can do that. A minister can do that. Your victory is as simple as your look. And as you look unto Jesus, no power will bring you down. As you look unto Jesus, every promise will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Don't cry, look. Don't panic, look. Don't worry, look. Don't fret, look. Don't be unbelieving, look. Jesus is there for you all the time. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, there are people, they are so much in a hurry, and they go to buy things of lower quality, made in, made in, made in that other place. It's cheap, it's available, it's nearby. And so they go to get that thing that came from a cheap factory. There are people that are looking for faith and they go to get that faith, cheap faith, shaking faith, shouting faith, running up and down faith. They don't get the faith that is originated, that is strengthened, that is perfected by Jesus Christ. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Any faith that originates from Christ will overcome. Any cheap faith made over there, made over there, will not overcome. But thank God, I have the faith that overcomes. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, or for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross for us, despising the shame for us, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Set down. Settled down. And the devil cannot get there to the throne of God and move him out of that place. Set, secured, standing, firm, solid, steadfast. He set down. On the right hand of God. Let me show you something here. We're looking at Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, I read from verse 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. He has raised us up. 
Anybody there? He has raised us up together and made us to sit together. Made us to sit together. Where are you seated now? I said, where are you seated now? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at that aeroplane up in the sky. A boy has a catapult and he has a stone inside. And then he stretched the rubber and said, my stone will hit that aeroplane. True. I said true. Look at that brother. Where is the brother now? Look at that sister. Where is the sister now? Seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And a bad man, an evil man, has a catapult. And he says, I will topple that man. I will topple that woman. And he threw the stone up. Will it reach heaven? Your life is secured. Your destiny is assured. And all the promises of God in your life, that yes and amen in Jesus' name. You are now in heavenly places of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have overcome. I said you have overcome. They will not touch you again. They will try, but they will fail. All you need to do as you go back home, all you need to do as you read your Bible, all you need to do as you pray, all you need to do for the rest of your life, looking unto Jesus, you will always be on the mountain top. Where is he there? Where is she there? Rise up and tell the Lord, this is the final commitment of my life, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. I'm going to call the commandant now. Nobody going, nobody going because something is going to happen to him. Power that will never fail. Authority that will never fail. I'm still here. I want him to lead you for some time in prayer. After that, I will come back and give you the final injection that will never fail in your life. The camp commandant is leading us in prayer now. When he, when he has led us for some time, I then come back. You'll be surprised. This new year will be the best year you ever lived in your life. Open your mouth, open your mouth and pray to the Lord. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The final solution. Brethren, this is the time to pray as people that are looking unto Jesus. Lift up your eyes on high spiritually. The eyes of faith. Looking unto Jesus. The eyes of trusting. Looking unto Jesus. People that don't know these secrets, they look with the eyes of trembling. But we look with the eyes of trusting. Looking unto Jesus. You can tell the Lord, Lord, I am looking unto you. Lord, I am looking unto you. Lord, I am looking unto you. Look with the eyes of faith. Look with the eyes of faith. You know, the people that don't know the final solution, 
they look with the eyes of fear. But we are looking with the eyes of faith, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. You can tell the Lord, Lord, I'm looking up to you. You know, we have been told, whatever the situation, whatever the turbulence you meet in this race that we are running, we are told to look unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. You have any need in your life, you look unto Jesus. The eyes, the, you are looking, the look of trusting. You are not looking with a look of trembling because of circumstances and situations around. You are looking with a, with a look of faith. A look of faith. Let all fears be gone. Let all fears be gone. Look above. Don't look around. Jesus is above. Remember that you are seated above with Him in heavenly places. Seated. Seated. You can never be unseated. Never. 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 I am seated in heavenly places in Christ with my Lord and Savior. And I'm looking unto Him. I'm looking above. I'm not looking around. Pray as people that are really looking above. Above persecution. Above earthly commotion. Above the fears. You know, there are rumors around. People are looking at the economy, but you are looking above. People are, look, are looking around at the insecurity, but you are looking above to the author and the finisher of our faith. There are people that look around. Mighty men around are falling. But they are not looking at the one that is saying, Hold the fort. I am coming. Jesus from heaven is signaling and telling you, I'm coming soon. You are a triumphant believer. You are a victorious Christian. You will make it this race. You will run it to the end. That's why people like Moses, people like Abraham, they didn't look at the situations around. They were looking above. And we should pray, believe in God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me tell you, listen to this. We are marching into a coming year. And people that are, people that have a mind, people that know the promise of God, people that know that they are moving into a year that God has promised good things concerning them, they don't look around. The kind of prayer you are going to pray now is the prayer of people that are looking unto Jesus. And so this moment, you are looking forward. You are looking beyond. You are not looking back. You are going to open your mouth and tell the Lord, Lord, I am looking beyond. I am looking above. I am looking with the eyes of trust. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray and tell the Lord, I am looking above. I'm not looking around. I am looking beyond. I'm not looking back. I am looking, trusting, 
not trembling. I am looking by faith, not in fear. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. He is the supplier of all your needs. He is your savior. He is your keeper. He is your provider. Look unto Jesus. You need spiritual things, look unto Jesus. Are there material needs? Look unto Jesus. Are there family circumstances and situations? Look unto Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't be alarmed. Keep your calm. Remember his promises. Remember his promises. Like Simon Peter, you can say, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto you. And you will walk upon this on the waters. You will walk upon every problem of life. You will walk upon every circumstance of life. You will triumph. You will not cave in. Believers in Christ do not cave in. We are not cowards. We are more than conquerors. We are not cowards. We are more than conquerors. Looking unto Jesus. Forget about the ocean around you. Forget about the storm around you. Walk on the water. Walk over your problems. Walk over the situations of life. Never take your eyes off Jesus even for a moment. Never take your eyes off the Master. He is the Master of ocean and earth and skies. The winds and the waves will obey his voice. The peace of God will keep your soul, will keep your mind, will keep you all the way. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Like the songwriter, keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking. All the way. Keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking, keep looking unto Jesus. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, forget about the fire of Nebuchadnezzar. Never. They were looking beyond. And right in the midst of the fire, the fourth person, the Son of God, was with them. And I'm telling you, when you fix your eyes and you focus your eyes on the Lord Jesus, You'll be seeing the invisible. People can't understand what you're seeing. They can't understand that you're seeing Jesus. You know, the Bible says, but we see Jesus. But we see Jesus. Are you seeing Jesus? Are you seeing Jesus? Keep telling the Lord throughout the remaining days of this year, Lord, I will look unto you. In the coming year, January, I'll look unto Jesus. February, I'll look unto Jesus. March, I'll look unto Jesus. April, I'll look unto Jesus. May, I'll be looking unto Jesus. June, I'll be looking unto Jesus. July, still looking unto Jesus. August, still looking unto Jesus. September, oh yes, you are still there, looking unto Jesus, not looking back. And October, you are still looking unto Jesus. And November, you are looking unto Jesus. Let me tell you, December. By that time, you'll be here again. And as you're here again, if the Lord tarries, you'll be saying, I'm still looking unto Jesus. I'm still looking unto Jesus. And for the rest of your life, you are looking unto the final solution. You are looking unto the final solution. Looking unto Jesus. Let's really pray. Let the prayer gather momentum. When, when, when a plane, when an aircraft is about to take off, you know, the engine gathers momentum. It gathers momentum until it, got to a, it gets to a height where when it moves, it will be soaring. It will ascend. And remember that you are seated in heavenly places in Christ. And you are looking unto Jesus. Let your prayer 
Let, you, let the volume of the prayer. Let Satan see you like an aeroplane that is about to fly to where your master is. That is about to soar. Because you are seated in heavenly places in Christ. Looking unto Jesus. In fact, we are, we are just warming up in the prayer. Because you will pray and you will pray. You will pray and you will pray. You will pray until your enemy will say it is too much. Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten that, you know, even, even the enemies of children of Israel, when Balak saw that Balak could not, in fact, when he was pronouncing the blessing on the people, he said, please, please, don't even say anything anymore. Your prayer this morning will make the enemy to be afraid and say, this is too much, this is too much, this is too much. Let your prayer be too much. Let your prayer be too much. Let your prayer be too much for the devil. Let your prayer blast the ears of your enemy. Let it block the ears of your enemy. That they cannot hear anything again but, but your prayer. They will not be able to hear anything again but your prayer. Let the volume of this prayer pull down the walls of Jericho. Let the volume of this prayer become like heaven is giving a chorus. Heaven is giving a chorus. Heaven is giving a chorus. Let the prayer be heard in heaven. Let the volume of prayer ascend to heaven. Looking unto Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Is there anyone I can call my brother there? My brother, where is my brother? Anyone I can call my sister there? My sister, where is my sister? Anyone I can call my child there? My child, where are you? Take your Bible. Raise up that Bible. Every promise in this Bible will be fulfilled in your life. This Bible is for you. The promises are for you. The provisions are for you. The privileges are for you. Every solution in the Bible is yours in Jesus' name. Anywhere you are now, whether you are in the auditorium or you are outside, you are at the post of duty, hold your Bible up. The promises are now yours. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Thank you for the word you have given us. Thank you for the promises. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the provision. Thank you for every supply in your word. I pray for every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, every participant at the retreat. Oh Lord, I pray every seed you have stored and reserved in this word for us will be theirs in Jesus' name. There is no failure for you. There is no defeat for you. There is no poverty for you. And there is no falling for you. The enemy cannot cross the Bible and get to you. The enemy cannot cross the blood of the Lamb and get to you. Your soul, your spirit, your life, your body, protected by the blood of the Lamb. No sickness will abide in your body. No infirmity will abide in your body. 
Sorrow will not abide in your life. Suffering will not abide in your life. As you keep on looking unto Jesus, every desire will be fulfilled. Every project will succeed. The work of your hand will prosper. Looking unto Jesus by faith, everything faith can do will be done in your life. You will cross your Red Sea. You will cross River Jordan. You will overcome every Pharaoh. You will defeat every magician. You will go through fire, it will not burn you. When you come out of that trial, out of that fire, you'll be better, you'll be purer, you'll be richer, you'll be more confident than when you went into the trial in Jesus' name. Every day will bring an addition of goodness in your life. Every week will bring an addition of prosperity in your life. Every month will bring an addition of strength in your life. Every month and every year will see you going up, climbing up, and nothing of evil will touch you in Jesus' name. Looking unto Jesus. You are seated in heavenly places where Christ Jesus. The catapult of the enemy will not get to you. The words of the enemy, the threats of the enemy, the curse of the enemy, the yoke of the enemy will not get to you. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness unto the kingdom of his dear son. Joy all through the way. Happiness all through the way. Security all through the way. Long life for you in Jesus' name. Henceforth, until you see Jesus face to face, surely goodness and mercy will follow you. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's a mansion waiting for you in heaven. Crown waiting for you in heaven. Reward waiting for you in heaven. Singing waiting for you in heaven. Prosperity all the way and power all the way until you get there. You will get there. Nobody will stop your journey halfway. Looking unto Jesus, the plan, the purpose of God will be fulfilled in your life. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray.